Do you want to know the best way to set up a Surfwave on the Supreme S220? Let's take a look. What's up guys, this is Mitch from BoardCo. Today I am here on beautiful Pineview Reservoir here in Huntsville, Utah, and we are gonna be showing you how to set up a surf wave on a Supreme S220. Now this boat is a 22 foot boat that kicks out an absolutely incredible surf wave. Honestly, a better surf wave than other 25 or 26 boats from even some of the ultra premium manufacturers like Nautique and Malibu. So let's take a look at the settings that we run on the S220 to get an ideal surf wave. We're gonna run through three different wave settings. The first one is we're gonna run through a standard out of the box factory setting surf wave. Where this is gonna be an ideal wave for pretty much anybody who gets behind the boat if they're just wanting a great wake surf wave. The second thing we're gonna set up is an extra steep barreling wave. One that's going to be an ideal wave for surf style riders really wanting to get aggressive for doing airs, for really bottom turning and snapping off the lip of the wake, or really big guys that are wanting some extra push to keep them in the pocket. The third wave we're gonna set up is a big mellow wave. Now the great thing about this wave is it's a wave that you can typically only find behind a Centurion or Supreme boat because of the way that the boat can set up a wave. We're gonna create a wave that's mellow and smooth but also has a ton of push and power. So let's jump right into it and take a look at the standard surf wave settings. All right, I now have a standard wave set up on the Supreme S220. You can see I'm gonna run through two different menus so you can see what settings I'm running. As you can see here, this is the surf plate setting. I have it set to surf left, though you can run this exact same settings in surf right and you should get pretty similar results. I currently have the starboard tab set at 70, so we can go anywhere between zero and 100. Going to smaller numbers is going to make the wave steeper and more barreling. Going to bigger numbers is going to make it so it mellows and rounds the wave out. We'll cover those in just a bit. And then I have the center plate, which I have set at 20. This is also similar to the side plate, and it's really a combination of the side plate is going to drive the boat up forward and to the side, and the center plate is gonna drive the boat straight forward. <clears throat> now, why would you wanna use these different settings? I currently have this setting at 20, though if I have less weight in the bow, I might bring that down to about a setting of five or 10. If I have more weight in the bow, I may, or sorry, if I have more weight in the bow, I may bring this down to a setting of five or 10. If I have less weight in the bow, I may drop this tab up to, you know, 35, 40 even, in order to push the bow down further into the water. When I switch over to the ballast settings, you can see I've got it set up so I have essentially 100% in almost all the ballast. I've reduced the ballast in the side we're not surfing on by 10%. You can run this surf boat with filling all of the ballast to 100%, but what ends up happening is your wave isn't quite as crisp and clean as it is when you just offload a little bit of weight. So if you take 30 seconds or so, offload about 10%, you have an ideal wave. If you're wanting to do wave transfers and jump from one side to the other, I would just leave everything full and you'll have a wave that's got a tiny little bit of wash on the top, but it's still gonna be a better surf wave than probably any other boat that you're gonna surf on. Lastly, I, this boat has a bow bag that is equipped, <clears throat> which I currently have set to 65. If I didn't have a bow bag equipped in this boat, I would just simply run the plate a little bit higher. Run it rather than running at a setting of 20 for the silent stinger plate, I would be probably running at a setting of 30 or 35. So you can run this boat with or without bow weight. It just kind of depends on how you've got it set up. There is a standard bow tank that is this one right here that's at 100, but there's also a bow plug and play bag that sits up there as well that I've only got set to 65. So now that I've showed you the ballast settings and the plate settings, let's take a look and see what this wave looks like. All right, we've now got a standard surf wave set up. As you can see, this wave has got a little bit of steepness to it. It's got some vertical and a little bit of barrel towards the back end, but it's not overly steep and aggressive. It's also not overly mellow and rounded. This is going to make sure that your wave is just, an, is kind of a nice medium wave for just about any style of riding. For some people, this is gonna be their ideal wave, but for pretty much everyone, it's gonna be a good wave, regardless of what style of board you're riding, what size of rider, or what skill level they're riding at. Right now, I'm currently going 11 miles an hour, which is the standard set point, but if you wanted to make it so that the wave is a little bit longer, you could speed up. If you wanted to make it so the wave was a little bit shorter and taller, you can slow down. The way that this operates is that every time that you speed the boat up, it's going to make the wave stretch out longer, but it's also going to reduce some of the power and push and make it smaller. Same thing, if you slow it down, it's going to reduce the length of the wave, but it's going to make it stack up taller and have more power. 
By getting the right speed for the right rider, you can ensure that you have the proper amount of length that they can surf on, while at the same time ensuring that they have a great experience and have all of the power and push that they need. 11 miles an hour is a great starting point, but you can drop it as low as about 10.6, or you can go all the way as high as about 12 miles an hour to get an ideal way for any rider. Perfect. All right, now that we showed you a standard wave setup, let's take a look at what a really aggressive wave looks like. Now, first I wanted to show you the ballast settings on the boat. As you can see, I have not modified or changed the ballast. We're running the exact same ballast we did on the standard wave, and this is gonna be a common theme throughout. I recommend not really changing the ballast configuration in the boats. If you really wanna get some unique, crazy wave shapes, you can adjust and play with ballast settings, but this boat is designed to run with all the ballast full and designed to make it so that you have just a great overall wave without having to modify and shift weight around the boat. Now, all of the different changes that we're gonna to make to the shape of the wave are all gonna be done using the wake plates at the back of the boat, both the silent stinger plate as well as the quick surf plates on the side. So when I jump over here to, this, to our plate settings, right now we've got it still set on the standard wave setting. I'm gonna change it and show you what we're doing. First off, we're gonna reduce the center plate. We're gonna go down to a setting of zero, and this is going to bring the bow up a little bit and sink the back end of the boat down a little deeper in the water, steepening up the wave and, and shortening it just slightly. The next thing I'm gonna do is go through and edit my surf settings, and I'm gonna drop this starboard plate down to a setting of 60. This is gonna be a really aggressive wave and probably a little bit too steep and aggressive for most riders, but to be totally honest, this is the wave that I personally surf on. It's really steep, really aggressive. It's great for surf style boards with really long, deep fins. It's also a great wave for big guys. So if you've got a 300 pound guy that's out riding behind the boat, they're gonna really enjoy being on that wave because it's gonna give more push and power, keeping them that, in that pocket and making it so they don't have to worry about fading back and out. So these are the settings I would run for that particular setup. And let's take a look at the wave and what this wave is gonna look like. Okay, now you're seeing the S220 surf wave that is set up with a really steep wave settings. As you can see, the wave has shifted just a little bit. It's now barreling a lot more fully at the back of the wave. Sometimes this is referred to as a hollow wave, meaning that it's got a big opening at the back end that's got a really nice curl at the back. The only downside to this wave is if you're not a, a skilled enough rider or you're not riding the right kind of board, it can be a wave that's really easy to slide off the face of. So you'll slide up the top, and if you don't have a good enough fin to grab a hold of it, it's just going to make it so that your board slides out from underneath you because it's going to feel like you're riding a vertical wall. But this wave can be a lot of fun if you're learning to do, if you're doing airs, if you're learning how to do bottom turns, snaps on the top of the wave, really anything that plays with this nice, hard, sharp lip that is at the top of the wave at the front end. Towards the back end, that nice barrel is gonna catch you as you fade further back. The one thing you gotta be careful of with this wave is if you get too far back, it kind of almost sucks you back and in where you have that big barrel at the back end of the wave. I've said it before, but this is my favorite wave shape and it is just an absolute blast to ride behind. This is a wave that is steeper and more vertical than what you're gonna find on other boats and that's just simply because of the hull design and the way that we're gonna use these plates on the S220. All right, now that you saw the standard wave and a steep wave, let's set up the mellow wave. This is a truly unique wave shape that you're really not gonna find on other tow boats because of the design of the EZV hull as well as the plates that are there at the back of the boat. So we've got the same settings we were running for the steep wave. Um, ballast is gonna remain the same, like I mentioned previously, but we're now gonna adjust the plate settings to give us a little bit more mellow wave that's rounded and, and shaped with more of a, a smooth rounded tabletop at the top of the, of the wave instead of being that harsh lip. So what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna take the center plate. I'm gonna knock it down and go up to 35. Now you can go more mellow than this and it's gonna change and adjust the wave, but we're gonna go with 35 just because we've got a little bit of bow weight in the boat as well. We're gonna then also take our plate settings and go all the way up to 85. This is gonna round and mellow out the wave. Now you can go notably more mellow than this. We can go all the way up to 100 on the plate. You can go all the way up to 75, 80, 95, even 100 on the center plate. What these settings are gonna do is gonna give you a nice rounded mellow wave that's a great skim wave, but it's, uh, you can take it further up, particularly if you have really little kids that are gonna get out there on a wave. I sometimes like to smash it way down and make it a lot smaller so that they don't have a hard time handling it. So let's take a look at what this wave shapes up like. Now you can see we've got a mellow wave set up. Now this is basically the polar opposite of the last wave that we showed. 
This is a really rounded, mellowed out wave. But as you can tell, it's still big. It's still got a lot of power. It's still gonna give you tons of push and it's gonna make it so that you have a great time riding. This wave is the ideal shape for guys that are riding a skim style board, one with a really small fin that you can slide and maneuver along the top of the lip of the wake. This is an ideal shape if you're wanting to learn how to do 360s because you can spin on the top of the wave almost like a tabletop and it's not going to end up catching you and stopping you halfway through your rotation. The other great thing about this wave shape is it's a fantastic wave for smaller riders and particular for younger kids. They can go and slide up and down the wave and it's not gonna to be too aggressive for them to ride and that they're gonna either be pushed into the back of the boat or slide, have the board slide out from underneath them. It's a really fun wave shape that is really difficult to create on other boats, but with the combination of the quick surf plates, the silent singer plate, and the easy V-hole on the Supreme 220, it's a really great wave to set up and one of the most popular ones that people go to on this boat. All right, hope that has been helpful in showing you all of the different wave configurations you can make on the Supreme S220. One of the important things to point out here is just how simple it is to set this boat up. You can just simply fill all the ballast, press surf left or surf right, and you're good to go. A few final notes I want to cover in talking about setting up the waves on this boat. The first one is when going through and dialing in your surf wave, it's important to keep in mind that your surf left wave is going to have a slightly different shape than your surf right wave. What that means is that your surf right wave is gonna naturally be a little bit steeper and your surf left wave is gonna be naturally a little bit more mellow. This is due to the rotation of the propeller. They're both the same quality of waves, it's just that they shape up a little bit differently right out of the box. Now, because of the customization capabilities on this boat, you can account for that, meaning that you're gonna probably run a little bit lower plate settings, smaller numbers on surf left. You're gonna run probably a little higher plate settings on surf right. This is gonna make it so you can customize and fine tune each wave to be exactly what you want. Now, even though this boat is super easy to dial in and set up and you can have a fantastic surf wave right out of the gates, it's also important to note that you can customize this wave to your liking. You can dial in exactly what you want and all right, we are back here in the store. We actually had some audio difficulties, which is why it cut out, um, but we were actually right at the very end of showing all the details with the Surf Rave on the Supreme S220. So I wanted to jump back here and thank you guys for checking out and watching this video and seeing all the details in regards to how to set up a Surf Wave on a Supreme boat. Now in the video, we were using a Supreme S220 and showing the Surf configuration of that boat, but the principles that are in there will still apply to the other boats in the Supreme line, including the S220. 240 and the ZS252. If you've got a ZS232 or a ZS212, those have a slightly different hull design and gonna have a slightly different configuration and setup than the others, but it's still gonna have some of the very similar principles to what we saw on the Supreme S220. The only difference that you wanna note on a Supreme S220 compared to any of the longer boats is that as a boat gets longer, the need to put additional bow weight into the boat gets reduced. Meaning that if you go to an S240, you would not need to worry about putting bow weight into the boat as much as you would in an S220. So that's just something to keep in mind. These same principles will also apply to just about any of the boats in the Centurion lineup as well. So the same principles regarding the plates, their, their positioning, the ballast distribution, things of that nature will apply to any of the boats that have either the Opta V-Hull in the Centurion lineup or the Easy V-Hull in the Supreme lineup. So we hope that's really helpful and gives you some idea of all of the different things you can do as far as setting up a surf wave on the Supreme and the Centurion boats that are available by us at BoardCo as well as anywhere else in the country. So we really appreciate the time you spend here with us. If you want more detailed content like this, go and check out the other videos that we have by visiting BoardCo.com. Thanks a lot and we'll see you soon.